Hey everyone, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, so today we're gonna talk about the threat modeling. And uh, believe me or not, like this is a, a topic where not many security professionals, AppSec engineers, or the pen testers are expert of. But believe me, if you if you learn this one, if you learn how to do the threat model, you will be stand out uh, from all the other security professionals. And no matter how many threat models you have done in the past or, or or like you know how much experience you have there's always something new to learn uh, when you when you're doing the threat model uh, in this video I'm gonna teach you like why do we need to threat model and then we will actually do a threat model for one of the most like you know basic system of course you can we can go and advance and we can do like you know some complex threat modeling but I want to I want to show you like how to start now threat modeling can be done in several ways of like uh, in my early days I was just doing in the Excel or like Google sheet so you can just use that and, and do the threat modeling uh, you can also do it on like word document you can also do like some there are some online tools where you can draw the architecture and stuff like that but the critical essence is why do we need to do a threat model now many times i've seen uh, pen testers and the uh, uh, like you know uh, i guess red team uh, people they directly jump onto the pen testing uh, by just having like you know some basic word with the uh, developers or the engineers on the need of pen test but believe me pen test scope can only be derived once you complete the threat model and the reason is if you don't do the threat model, you don't know what are the threats uh, you have in your system. And if you don't know what are the threats, you don't know during the pen test where to focus. So you are just shooting blindly uh, into the wild and, and like in trying to grab something, uh, which is okay like sometimes, but I think uh, for a good security assurance, you must do the threat modeling, which will give you the scope items on where to focus during your pen test. And, and that will give you full coverage of the of the product security. Now, uh, going back to the threat model. So uh, threat modeling, uh, of course, like, you know, OWASP has tons of resources. Uh, it will tell you, like, you know, what are the overviews, objectives, and these are the main questions when we ask, right? So what are we working on? What can go wrong? What are we going to do about that? And did we do a good job? So it's more about uh, finding what the threats are, finding what the controls are, then determine if this control is enough. If not, then implement additional controls. And it also has like detailed threat modeling process, uh, which you can uh, learn and read through. I'm not gonna deep into like, you know, this theoretical, I'm, I'm gonna straight jump into the <coughs> actual threat modeling exercise using one of the Microsoft tool. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to show you these resources. And, and stride is being like, you know, uh, one of the um, maybe most common uh, model uh, that people have used and, and stride means uh, spoofing, tampering, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service and elevation of privilege. So when you are assessing your uh, product, you are assessing the service, uh, you look at each asset and, and, and see which threat uh, it, it could have based on the component uh, that's part of the uh, product. So now uh, I'm, today we're going to talk about this Microsoft Threat Modeling tool and I, I put the link in the description to if you want to play around it's an open source so you can download and, and like you know play with it. Uh, of course there are multiple template which comes by default like if you are threat modeling a system which is Azure of course they have a template for that. Uh, medical devices but uh, I guess for all the other system I would just use the knowledge base. You can, there is also a getting started guide. So if you don't know how to do that, you can also create a new template. Uh, suppose you have one system and, and over the time it, the system is going to evolve, you're gonna add new features. So you want to create a template and, and like, you know, keep using the template and enhance your existing threat model. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna click on the create model. And uh, today, I guess my goal is to talk about uh, uh, or maybe do a threat model on the system, which is simple enough and which is very common. So let's say there is a there's a web application, uh, there is a user who uh, can use the browser uh, to log into the application, and then the application uh, talks to the database, uh, which is going to check whether the user exists in the system. And if so, the uh, system will give back, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, give the entry back to the user. So here, uh, to talk about like some of the navigation here, um, this is the main 
uh, pan you want to focus on so here uh, it has categorized as generic process so you can select like what kind of uh, system we are dealing with uh, I guess in our case we are dealing with the web application so I'm just gonna do double click and click here the next we have is what are the external interactor right so you have browser you have authorized provider external web service that could be a service to service interaction right so human user etc let's say in our case there is a human user what is the data store we are using uh, suppose we are just using uh, cloud storage let's assume that so let's select that one here there's also uh, like cache and HTML file local storage and, and cookies and device let's say we are also storing the session in the uh, like you know application is storing session in the local storage let's just keep that okay what kind of communication uh, or the data flows uh, that we are using um, I don't imagine anything to be HTTP these days, but <coughs> so let's let's select the HTTPS for now. Okay, so uh, let's see what else do we have. Trust line bound. So next we have uh, like a trust boundary. Uh, this is very very critical uh, when you are doing the threat modeling. You you must understand what is the trust boundary of the system. Now what is the trust boundary? So a trust boundary is a location on the data flow diagram where data changes its level of trust. Any place where data is passed between two processes is typically a trust boundary. If your application reads a file from a disk, there's a trust boundary between the application and the file because outside process and user can modify the data in the file. If your application makes a call to a remote process or remote process makes call to your application, that's a trust boundary. If you read the data from the database, there is physically a trust boundary because other processes can modify the data in the database. Any place you accept user input in form is always a trust boundary. So let's simplify this. So uh, how, how I look at it is whenever you do not trust or there is an external service or a user who can interact with any part of your system component, that becomes a boundary and 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 you can think of as a boundary as a like on all the all the uh, components on the one side you can trust all the communication which is coming from the other side you cannot trust so that what define the trust boundary and that will drive your entire threat model because anything uh, where the communication is coming from the external vectors you do not trust and that's how you can identify the threats so here let's uh, let's let's define our internet boundary first off <coughs> because this is like a uh, internet application all right uh, then you can of course if you are containerizing then there's also a container boundary if this service is hosted on the corp network you can use like a corp net trust boundary you can also use like other browser boundaries now for each component uh, you can edit the properties so here you can say uh, like you know my first app right that's the app uh, you can also say like okay this application is uh, this component is out of scope uh, for so and so reason in the threat model what is the code type generic process etc right uh, accepts the input from any remote user or entity let's just select that okay implements or use authentication mechanism yes implements uses authorization mechanism yes every system should have uh, our system has let's assume authentication authorization communication protocol yes we are using HTTPS sanitizes the input uh, yes so it is the output let's assume it says no all right so we have selected this now what we have to do is let's first draw the trust boundary so here all right so this human user is on the internet right and this person is making call to our application which is here okay and now you can see this is violating our trust boundary so we cannot trust this user because the communication is coming from this side which is not trusted however we trust all the components and communication in here okay next uh, we need to do is let's say then the communication goes from 
my app to the cloud storage to check whether the user exists in the in the system so let's say this user is calling like login request with the username and password or HTTPS now because this system is within one subsystem like within one system let's say uh, assume it talks over the HTTP which is not ideal but let's assume in our case it does uh, so this is going to talk with the over HTTP right and once the uh, communicate like once the authentication is complete the user would let them let the user go in and and it stores the data and now imagine like just make sure this local storage will be on the browser and browser will be on the this side of the trust boundary on the user side right so it's also going to store the data in here and let's edit the property here file local storage uh, stores credential let's say yes <coughs> others encrypted uh, okay let's say yes stores log data uh, yes backup shared uh, I don't think so it's shared but uh, probably local storage can be shared if the browser right so let's say yes select here okay um, now this is our simplest threat model you can see of course you can add like you know bunch of cookies it also has all the cookies where it store the session and, and stuff you can also have uh, authorization provider so let's assume the application is talking with authorization providers such as I don't know if it's using SAML or SSO or something then it can also use oops sometimes this gets tricky to yes okay so it talks with the authorization provider which is also let's say our one of our internal service or if it's in Google or something like external you could have another trust boundary here like this uh, so let's assume uh, all right so let's assume this authorization provider is Google it provides whether the user is authorized or not authenticate itself yes type uh, code Microsoft no okay all right so this is our like basic I guess threat model uh, of course you can make it as complex as you want however <coughs> what I would suggest is to have the threat model at least for the access control system on any application that will give you really really good insight on what are the threats in my system now once you're done with this report you want to click on generate report and it should spit out the report let me open that real quick okay of course we did not specify all the metadata here which you can uh, but uh, here is the summary of like what is the threat model uh, this is our entire diagram on on how the application is structured um, here is the first interaction which is HTTPS right which is violating our trust boundary so here you can see all the threats which have been identified one spoofing the human user entity right spoofing is one of the thing and that's part of the first stride so it's gonna keep it here there's a cross-site scripting because of course the uh, input can come from the human user and, and they can have the invalid uh, 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 not invalid like malicious payload and there is no output encoding so uh, it is possible that cross-site scripting is a real threat a potential data reproduce uh, uh, repudiation uh, because that it did not receive data from like there is no we did not specify any logging so like you know logging is one of the core component for any application so we can say uh, what event was generated at what time so we are missing that as well uh, process crash or stop my first app uh, run slowly uh, violating availability metric uh, because denial of service we did not say we have any throttling we did not say we have any web application firewall or or any service which will protect against the managed DDoS attack so that's why we have this threat 
data flow HTTPS is potentially interrupted. Uh, it pretty much goes in the same direction, but yeah, it's a denial of service elevation using impersonation. So uh, yeah, authorization is of course obvious threat when you have the login. Uh, remote code execution because it uh, have untrusted input. Uh, execution flow, of course, uh, attackers can choose whatever they want to import and then cross that request forgery. Right, so this is the uh, these are the kind of uh, data you want to uh, put in, and then also the good thing is you can also add notes here, so you remember what came and and like you know what you wanted to add and stuff like that. Um, other thing you can also play around like uh, there is also a help section here, and also what is the secure development lifecycle. Uh, uh civil threat generation you can also like you know modify some of the options here enable model validation you can do that to validate your model and uh, there are some basic things here uh, but i think i think the core thing you want to learn about is uh, like you know when you when you talk when you sit with the engineers you try to define the flow of the system and then you kind of put it in the model uh, of course i did it on here the other system I've also used so many times is draw.io. So you can also uh, draw the same sort of diagram and the trust boundaries and you can have the trust boundary as a dotted arrows and, and whatnot, right? But the only thing is uh, here it will not give you the threats. Uh, you have to kind of think by yourself or you have some template you can use that. But yeah, stride is the good model uh, that like if you're just starting out you can customize it you can add new categories uh, but this would cover like you know most of them so there are so many ways to do the threat model but believe me uh, if you know this uh, how to do the uh, how to do the uh, good threat modeling then you will be stand out from all the other uh, pen testers or maybe all the other security professionals because this is very critical and and every system which, which uh, like you know when you start building uh, you first need to do the threat model so you know exactly what the threats are and, and you don't want to go back uh, like you know wait for the pen test to come back and say oh you're missing the CSRF production now you have to go back and like you know re reorganize your code rather if you know that CSRF is a real threat why don't you just fix it when you're building it and it, it saves a lot of time it saves a lot of money it's it's less expensive very less expensive that's why uh, uh, like you know most of the products are are gone through the threat model before they can even come to the pen test so yeah that's that's i wanted to share some uh uh this topic because i thought like this might be interested uh, to a lot of you people uh who are really watching the pen test videos and also if you have any experience with the other threat modeling tool uh please share with me i'm i'm i want to learn and maybe we can uh, also explore together on this channel uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to uh, put it down in the comment section. Don't forget to hit the uh, like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys next Monday. Bye.